Hello, hey everybody, and have yourself a merry, whoa crap, ah. sorry, <laughs> as usual I am getting set up, uh, so welcome, I am Patrick, and you caught me getting set up for our ceremony tonight, it is Wednesday night, and every Wednesday night, I lead a sacred pipe ceremony. So, that is where you are, where I am, what we are doing. So, welcome, welcome, welcome. And I am just, I figure it's okay to start the video. I'm going to put my phone down so I can get ready as I'm talking. How's that? Maybe a little bit this way. There we go. All right. So, officially, welcome. I am Patrick, and I am the owner and proprietor and whatever else you want to call me of Perching Wolf Studios, Shamanic Arts. And... You know, I guess I've been doing this long enough that I could actually do kind of an introduction. Um, I, um, I know there's a lot of people who have been watching me steadily, for whom I am very, very grateful. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your energy and your support. Um, and for those who are joining me for the first time or who have been kind of watching, not really knowing who I was, maybe I should give myself a little bit of an introduction. Mm. So, I am Patrick Corrigan, and I am a shaman, teacher, practitioner, uh, Reiki master, all that good stuff, and I am in the Seattle area, I'm down, my office is down in Renton, Washington. And forgive me for moving around as I talk, but um, I have been doing this work for nigh on 12 or 13 or 15 years, something like that. Um, and oh, for those just joining, I decided that I've been doing this long enough that I should probably introduce myself to those who don't know who I am. And so I have been doing this shamanic work for a very long time. Um, hey, Pixie. Um, and it's like when I discovered shamanism, I realized that that's what I've been doing all my life. It wasn't so much something I, I learned about and, oh, I need to learn all the rules. I need to figure out how to do that. It was like a uh, validation of who I already was, what I was already doing. And so through a number of personal growth and in initiations and workshops and all that kind of stuff, um, I finally was guided. Well, not finally. I remember I was in a class and we journeyed to our spirit guides to find out what is our next step on our path. And on the top of the list that my guides gave me was teach. And so I was like, go, who me? But it kind of was meant to be, it was part, it's part of my job. Um, and I, I didn't, ever think I would be doing this kind of thing? Well, when I first started learning, I was taking a, a, blah, blah, a psychic development class with um, Christina Bloom. If you live in Wisconsin, or actually now that we're on the internet and Zoom and all of that kind of thing, doesn't matter where you are, check out Christina Bloom. That's Christina with the K, 
and bloom like the plant. Um, she is the first one who have really set me on this path, like officially. And I remember at one point, you know, I had taken the psychic development class just to find out, just to, for self-development. I had no intentions of really doing it with or for other people. Um, and one day she looked at me and she was like, you know, when you start doing this work, and I'm like, yeah, right, who me? And um, so then she's the one that actually took me on a vision quest back 11 or 12 years ago. And at that point, um, white buffalo calf woman, who I will probably talk about in a minute when we get the ceremony started, um, she appeared to me on my vision quest and she told me that my path is to be shared. And so that is partially why I'm doing this. This, this is kind of a command performance, if you will. It's like, you know, when we work with our guides, when you're working in shamanism and you're working with your guides, a lot of people think that number one, either you're in charge and you're commanding the spirits to do certain things or they're in charge and you work for them and you have to do everything they tell you to and neither of those are true. It's a co-creative effort. They have their input and you have your input and it is all negotiable. Like I had a friend who was a surrogate mother for someone and brought into this world this beautiful baby boy and, and she came to me because she's like his sister came to me in a meditation and now she wants to be born and she wants me to be the biological mother and I was like well how will that affect your life and your goals and your path and she's like well I just don't think I've got it in me I've got my heart's taking me in other directions and I'm like then say no just because they're spirits doesn't mean they are in charge of you in fact if you have a spirit guide that is telling you what to do, um, commanding you and putting you down and all that, you have the power to fire them. It's, it's a co-creative effort. It's meant to empower us and them. And <clears throat> when a shaman does work, and we, we call it being the hollow bone, so we become that channel through which spirit can move into this world through us, where we are their hands and their voice and their eyes. But that's not giving, that's surrendering into who we actually are. It's not a giving over a power. It's not possession. Um, we have every, um, it's just like when you're working, when you've worked at a place for 15 or 20 years and you get to know your coworkers, or it's like a group of friends and you know how to work together. Maybe that's a better analogy. Like, like you're on a, a baseball team or something and you've been together for like 10 or 15 years. You know each other, you know each other's strengths and weaknesses. You know how to work together. That is what it's like with your spirit guides. They, it is a relationship, just like any other friendship. Um, and they're there to listen to you, to help you, to guide you, no matter how big or small um, your problems are. There is nothing too small. Like people think, oh, I have to wait until I'm in crisis to connect with my spirit guides. It's like, no, you can talk to them if you like 
stub your toe or something like that or even about the good stuff like oh my god i can't believe they asked me out or whatever you know it's it's a relationship that lasts a lifetime and it is a two-way street it's a give and take and I was talking about myself, trying to introduce myself, but I kind of got on a different tangent. If you watch this for very long at all, over the weeks, <laughs> you know that I have a tendency to split off. But yeah, so you have spirit guides, whether you've met them or not. This seems to be a common theme this week, so I guess I will go in that direction. Um, One of the things, like a while, like a number of years ago, I did an interview on a, a friend's radio show. Um, it was actually a friend of a friend, and he asked me, like part of like what was my mission as a shaman, and just without even thinking about it, I blurted out to demystify shamanism. And I don't know where that came from, but that is definitely something I am here to do. Um, and he's like, how are you going to demystify shamanism? It, it works with the spirits. How can you demystify something that works with the spirits? And I'm like, because that's normal. Everybody has spirit guides and everybody has the ability to connect with their spirit guides, to hear their spirit guides, um, to follow that guidance, to open their heart and their intuition to connect with their guides or their angels, um, that actually is normal. And so if we can normalize that so that, you know, just the average person walking down the street, you mentioned angels or spirit guides, or whatever, and they like, they're right there, they understand what you're talking about. Um, instead of like, I keep thinking about <clears throat> At work at my former day job a long time ago, I remember someone like they thought they thought of their mom or something, and then their mom called them like seconds later on their phone, and it freaked them the heck out. And I'm like, that is normal. That that happens at least twenty times a day for me. I look for those synchronicities. That's how I that's how I navigate my world. And so instead of like the woo-woo stuff being out there somewhere and freaky, um, to make it normal, we need to normalize that kind of thing. And that's part of the empowerment, you know, and that's my job as a shamanic teacher is to help empower people to connect with their own guidance, to connect with their own guides and to... I'm not going to say control, but to be more in alignment with their spirits or with their lives so that they have um, a better navigational system and are, can be more at peace with what's going on around them, knowing that they are part of it, they have a say in it. Um, and so I don't... I guess it's kind of like, you know, the ultimate job goal of any job is to make your job um, obsolete, right? If I can <laughs> teach the world to sing or whatever, um, teach people to learn to find their own guidance, to feel their own pure heart and innocence and divinity, then... You know, like I, I've been telling people lately, I have enough um, on my plate trying to um, become better aware and learn more like self-knowledge, my own power. I don't need more power coming. I don't need to be an authority figure. I don't need to be the power, the one that people come to to find out what they should do. When, even when I'm doing card readings and stuff, I'm like, <clears throat> it's always like, this is, this is what I see, and it is your choice what you will do with it. You know, I'm not here to tell you, you have to do this. Like, recognizing the divinity in each person, 
recognizing the sovereignty of each person and the goal is that you know the more empowered enlightened people we have on the planet the better off we all are you know and because we're all connected and that's something i keep talking about too like over and over we are all connected heart to heart we are all part of the same energy there is only one energy and we are different vibrations in that field of energy and so we're not the ocean we're the waves and at the heart of each wave is the ocean so we are all part of each other we are all connected to each other when i'm following my guidance when i'm following my heart my heart is connected to creator to creative source energy <clears throat> and when you follow your guidance your intuition following your heart your heart is connected to that same source energy so it's like we're an orchestra i have my instrument i have my notes to play in the world my frequencies to bring in and you have your own unique frequency and notes to play in the world from the same conductor we're watching the same conductor we're listening to the same conductor and that's how we work in harmony right i don't have to be playing the same notes as anyone else but when i'm playing my notes and you're playing your notes when i'm at my frequency you're at your frequency we work in harmony um a friend said a number of years ago and that I've, and i've always held on to this we there if we're all singing the same note we can't have harmony we need to be singing our own unique frequencies our own unique songs mm. and that's how we create harmony so lecture over i think <laughs> until something else pops into my head but okay welcome 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 you know i've been babbling for a little bit um but uh, what we are doing here, if you're, if you're watching again, thank you for coming back. Thank you for sticking with me all these weeks and months. If you're new, I'm welcome. I hope you enjoy this. Um, my intentions in doing this, I started back, um, when, just after the pandemic started and as a shaman and as a, a pipe carrier, I take it as my duty to hold space, to, to hold the frequency of love and light, um, especially when my community, whether it's local or global, are going through upheaval and uncertainty. It's like those of us in positions of like the, it's, Again, I don't want to be an authority figure. I don't want to say I'm better than anyone else because I'm not. But those of us who have been who have been called, it's it's to be a shaman is to be called to be of service in a specific way. And that is part of my job, part of my calling is to hold that frequency to see through the darkness to the light that is always there. And so as the world is, is going into this dark night, as the world is going through this dark night of the soul, and as it was beginning through the pandemic, um, I realized that I needed, I was being, I felt like I needed to be doing ceremony. And so <clears throat> I started doing ceremony every night, doing this pipe ceremony, because pipe is, probably the most sacred space that I have learned about, that I have experienced in my life. Um, <coughs> and that's saying a lot in my 50 years on this planet, I have always been spiritual. I've always leaned toward the mystical and um, I, have had a lot of experiences and this is the most sacred space that I know of. Um, and so 
I began to hold to do ceremony every night to help hold the space, hold the, the light. Um, and I was asking others for prayers, like whatever their prayer intentions were, send me your prayer intentions, you know, text me your intentions. And um, I just realized I better turn my ringer off just in case. There we go. Um, in case someone tried to text me while we're doing this. Um, and I would include them in the ceremony and offer those prayers up for people. But then it was the realization that if I'm meant to empower others, if I want to empower others, it's so much more powerful to have, to create the space for others to send their own prayers and connect directly to creator, to great spirit and find that alignment, to find that peace. And so I started doing this on Facebook Live to help to give people, you know, and specifically I did it on Wednesday nights because it's the middle of the week. We're halfway to the weekend. There's, you've gone through some challenges or it's probably been, you know, it's been part of a week that you've had to deal with things and you've got another part of a week ahead of you. So let's take this moment in the middle to just let down that armor, have safe space to breathe, to connect with creator, connect with your own heart, your own spirit. Um, because when we are aligned, um, actually like, Most of the time, if I've got prayer intentions and things that I'm wanting or feel like I need, when I align, when I actually move into alignment, all of a sudden those become um, frosting. And I realize I don't really need those things. It's like alignment is at the heart of all of it. So once you're aligned and once you're like when you, the more you can move into alignment, the easier things manifest and you no longer have to actually ask for things so much as they just pop up as you need them. Um, that's where those synchronicities come in that I was talking about before. Like when you start to notice synchronicities, then you know that you're on the right path because that's the universe's, those are the little breadcrumbs that the universe gives you to let you know you're on the right path. So, that is my intention of doing this, is to give people that safe and sacred space to connect, to move into alignment, and that alignment makes the rest of the week so much easier. When we move from our heart and with, from alignment, then we are part of everything. We're not fighting to get through. We don't, we're not in conflict. We're, when we're in alignment with ourselves, we're in alignment with everything else, because like I said, it's all one. It's a non-dual universe. So things go a little more smoothly. They flow a little easier. And so that is that is what I am trying to do here to give people that space um, to breathe and to remember that the workaday world, the hamster wheel of routine is not all there is, that there is something much, much deeper and fuller um, to reality than just that. So, so I started doing this online and part of my reasoning too was that if there were no pandemic, I would probably be doing these circles in person. Um, and once the pandemic is over, that is at my every intention is to be doing this in person with circles of people um, open it up for people to actually come and be in person if they are interested. Um, so I keep update, like you know, stay aware of that once the pandemic is over, hopefully sooner than later, but who knows. But um, that is why I am here. I, again, it's to empower you to, to create your own connection, your own alignment with spirit and to ask those prayers and those intentions. Um, because 
if you have a desire in your heart, if you have a need in your heart, where do you think that comes from? It's not selfish to ask for what you want or what you need. It's those passions and those desires that come from spirit. Those are, that's part of our compass to know what direction to go in. So no matter how big or unreasonable or unrealistic your need or your desire is, ask. Because the universe is so vast compared to who we are right here, right now in these physical bodies. And you have no idea of what's possible of, of that thing that's waiting just around the corner. Um, like, <laughs> um, a friend of mine who does, a, she's a psychic medium, Kate Mariah. Um, I listen to her videos as well. I highly recommend her. And she was just talking on one of her recent videos about how she saw this picture one time. It was a kid grasping her teddy bear and there was Jesus standing in front of her with a giant teddy bear behind his back. And he's like, are you sure you won't let me have that little teddy bear? Because he was ready to give her that great big huge one. And so it's like letting go, that's what prayers and intent, you know, it's that letting go, opening to receive. And I'm not sure where I was going with that. <laughs> But, oh, because we never know what the universe has in store for us. We never know what, the, what is that, the bigger, better thing that's just around the corner. If we can let go of the smallness and the little things that we're hanging on to. And um, like Dr. Wayne Dyer said, that nobody knows enough to be a pessimist. We think we know everything and we know all the factors and we know how life works. But what we know is here and what we don't know is here and what we don't know we don't know is way out there. So um, that's where innocence comes in. That's where the childlike wonder comes in. It's like just believe in miracles, especially during this season. I love Christmas. I'm not Christian anymore, but I was raised Catholic. I still celebrate Christmas, but more in a, I guess, a secular instance, but also like Yule and Solstice and pretty much every culture, every faith has some um, festival of lights at this time. And it's because it's the darkest time of the year. And it's from that dark that the light is born. And so the darkest night of the year is the birth of the light. And so it's that time when we go inside, just like it's winter time. We're like the bear. We go inside to hibernate. We're not active outside as much because the days are shorter. So it's a time of self-reflection of going inside into the dark. And as we reflect on ourselves, that's where we find our own light to shine into the world. Um, so believe in miracles. Miracles are, how did Seth put that? Something like miracles are what happened when you get out of the natural flow of nature. Miracles are, are a natural unfolding of life. And we get in the way of that with our logic and our left brains and trying to figure out how to make things happen. It's miracles happen when we get out of the way and allow them to happen. And so, like I was just telling someone the other day, yesterday I think, I, I did another, I did an interview for a podcast, which I will give you more information on when it gets closer on my Facebook page and my website and stuff. But I was saying how when I was a kid, I always... I loved Disney. I loved Walt Disney movies and especially the cartoons because I'm a cartoonist and at one point I wanted to be an animator for Disney. But um, I always believed it's like the Disney cartoons as much as people um, degrade them or make fun of them or whatever. I've all, I always believed that, you know, the whole thing about when you wish upon a star 
you know, your wishes come true, dreams can come true, miracles happen, bibbidi bobbidi boo, the fairies are real, things miraculously happen. It's like those, so as I grow into my adult practice of being a shaman, I'm realizing that all the things Disney told us as kids, all those things are true. You really do get what you want. You really do get your thoughts create things. Miracles happen. And it's the pure of heart. It's being pure of heart, having that childlike wonder, looking through the eyes of a child at the world. Kind of a Zen mind, beginner's mind kind of thing. Like we, we get so much information and so much knowledge in our heads that instead of seeing with our hearts and knowing, okay, I don't know how this is gonna happen, but this is gonna happen. We get our, in the way with our, we think, we outthink ourselves, we overthink it, and we have all these logistical, logical reasons why this can't happen. But, like I said, the universe is energy. There is no sol solidity, like at, on some level, we're just solid here in this world because of the frequency we're at and we're at a similar frequency to everything around us. Um, so it seems solid, but the heart of the matter is that you are, you are made up of more space than solid matter. The space between your molecules, between your atoms, there is, there, there's nothing there, um, and it's the space. I'm really going down a rabbit hole. Um, I'm gonna need to pull myself back so we can get to our ceremony, but everything is light. Love is the only power in the universe, and magic happens. Maybe I'll leave it there rather than to go into a quantum physics lesson. Magic happens. You are magical. You are love and light and your essence. And what's that? There was another Wayne Dyer quote about um, what part of in God all things are possible don't you understand? It's like all things are possible with God with divine, with creator. So, believe. Get into the heart of a child. I know a lot of people don't like this season um, because of trauma as childhood, as seeing like the hypocrisy of light and love and then seeing how people actually act and dysfunctional families and all of that. And it's kind of a throwing the, the baby out with the bathwater. So I... I urge you, I guess that's the word, I urge you to find that inner child of you that is pure and in innocence beyond anything that's been done to you, beyond any of the, anything that's been done to you, beyond anything that you've been shown, um, just because others don't understand or don't feel that magic of this season doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It doesn't mean that it isn't in your heart. I'm not sure if that's exactly what I wanted to say, but know that you are magical, that all things are possible. Okay, I have probably rambled long enough. <laughs> so, um, the sacred pipe ceremony, which you all came here for, this is the sacred pipe. For those of you who may be new here, this is the sacred pipe. Um, the stem is the divine masculine, and the pole, bowl is the divine feminine. So when we put it together, it is all of creation. It's the masculine and the feminine working in harmony. Um, and that's, that's why we, we store it separately, the bowl and the stem, because when we put it together, it is, like I said, so powerful. Putting the pipe together opens a channel straight 
to Creator. So, um, the pipe came to us, according to story, 19 generations ago from White Buffalo Calf Woman, the one I, I mentioned before that had appeared to me on my vision quest and told me that my path was to be shared. And she has been with me since then, becoming like, and she's the one that basically called me to become a pipe carrier. But she brought it to the Lakota people 19 generations ago, <laughs> taught them how to do the pipe ceremony, how to use the pipe as the center of um, a total of seven ceremonies that she brought them. And what it basically is, is a mobile altar. It's, it's basically the altars. This is the church, like, to put it in Western terms, um, so they can take it with them. Because, like, in all indigenous cultures, every piece of the earth is sacred land you don't have to go to church you don't have to like wherever you are is sacred in fact you are sacred land you are of the earth your body not your soul but your body is of the earth i had a, i wrote a poem a long time ago which i'm not going to try to recite but basically the visual that was is like my soul came to the earth and the earth reached up and wrapped herself around me embraced me in love that's what our bodies are so you are literally sacred land so um anyway tangent um so what the ceremony itself looks like um the first thing i'm gonna do is drum in sacred space and what we do that for is to create a space to focus, we, we call in the spirits and the elements to hold space for us um, so that we can do our inner work. And I'm gonna do that right now. So this is how I do it. And if you're out like wanting to do ceremony or meditate or whatever, you know, it's, you've all heard about, you know, surround yourself with white light that's kind of, the, that's it at its basis, and you can make it as complex or simple as you want, but this is the way that I do it. Spirit of the earth. Spirits of the air. Spirits of the fire. Spirits of the water. Spirits of the upper world. Spirits of the lower world. Compassionate spirits of the middle world. The Fae. Spirits of the land. And the ancestors of the land. Thank you for your presence. Bless us with your love and your light. Oh. All right. So now we are in sacred space. Um, and when I do that, I am enclosing you in that same sacred space. So in essence, you are all right here with me in circle. Um, because time and space are an illusion in a quantum holographic universe. So let me take one more sip of chai. So what I'm gonna do, the first thing I'm gonna do is light some sage and smudge everything on my altar. Then I am going to say a prayer and join my pipe. And I will put four pinches of tobacco into the bowl. And yes, it is just tobacco. Um, probably one of the biggest questions I get. Um, and then 
I have a uh, song that White Buffalo Calf Woman gave to me that I will sing, which is kind of the power song of my pipe. And so I will sing that, and then I will light the pipe, um, and I will blow a breath blessing in each of the directions to Father Sky, to Mother Earth, to all my relations, and then to Creator, and then I will hold it to my forehead and my heart for a moment of silent prayer. And then I will come back and relight the pipe if I need to. And then the first thing I do is I will blow a breath blessing into my camera. And through the magic of the internet and the magic of the quantum universe, that blessing will come from my heart and go to yours. Then I will continue to blow some breath blessings um, intermittently with sitting quietly in meditation. Then maybe do some more. I never know exactly how long it's going to take or what's going to come up. But then um, once, once I feel it complete, um, then I will say more prayer. I will raise my pipe up say another prayer, do another song, <laughs> um, and then take the pipe apart, and that will be it for the ceremony. And then I'll probably babble on a little bit longer if you want to stick around for that, but that's not necessary. So I invite you, as I'm doing this, you can either sit and watch me and, and feel the sacredness of the space that I feel like and just... Again, with the childlike wonder, um, I know when I, there's a, there's a um, metaphysical store of stargazers nearby here in Bellevue, Washington, that when it's not a pandemic, do a weekly pipe ceremony, and it is so magical. And every time I go, I'm like, oh my God, this is so, I'm just so grateful to be able to be a part of something like that, because it's not something that everybody does or you see every day um, and so it's it's an honor to be able to share it with others and to open up others experiences of different ways of praying and connecting otherwise feel free to do whatever it is that helps you to connect that helps you to align with spirit whether it's praying out loud or silently or chanting or meditating whatever it is um, you are welcome here to do that, to join our energies and our intentions together um, for a better and more loving world, right? So that is what to expect, so I will get to it now. Um, and we will see what happens. So thank you again for joining me. I am honored by your presence. I feel your energy and I'm so grateful for it. So, let's see here. May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty each and every day. May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty each and every day. May the beauty of the fire lift your spirits higher. May the beauty of the earth, beauty of the earth, fill your heart with mirth. May the beauty of the rain wash away your pain. May the beauty of the sky make your mind to fly. May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty each and every day. May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty each and every day. May the beauty of the fire lift your spirits higher. May the beauty of the earth fill your heart with mirth. May the beauty of the rain wash away your pain. May the beauty of the sky make your mind to fly. 
May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty each and every day. May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty each and every day. May the beauty of the fire lift your spirits higher. May the beauty of the earth fill your heart with mirth. May the beauty of the rain wash away your pain. May the beauty of the sky make your mind to fly. May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty <clears throat> each and every day. May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty each and every day. May the beauty of the fire lift your spirits higher. May the beauty of the earth fill your heart with mirth. May the beauty of the rain wash away your pain. May the beauty of the sky make your mind to fly. May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty each and every day. May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty each and every day. Grandmother, Grandfather, Eagle, I send a voice. I ask permission to smoke in this place at this time. All my guides and guardians watch over me as I smoke. Creator, Earth Mother, Tawaban, Shanadisi, Magikiwis, and Waboos, there is always room for you in my pipe. Creator, Earth Mother, for the two-legged, the four-legged, the winged, the crawlers and the swimmers, all my relations come smoke with me. Grandmother Moon, Grandmother Ocean, to the energy of birth, growth, maturity, the spirit realm and our ancestors, may all the passages of our lives be in harmony and grace. Creator, Earth Mother, to Eagle, Coyote, Bear, White Buffalo, White Buffalo Calf Woman, bringer of the pipe and the law of good relations to the people.
Yo. Okene bayama okene bayama okene bayama okene yo okene bayama okene bayama okene bayama okene yo
grandmother, grandfather eagle, I send a voice. I thank you for our lives. I thank you for this circle, ever changing, ever expanding. Thank you for your guidance through these dark times. Thank you for helping us to find our light and our empowerment. Thank you for all the wonderful people, this time of year especially, that let their light shine, that find that light and inspire others by their light to shine their own. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow. I'm gonna to need to ground after that one. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. All right, so again, thank you. Thank you for your presence. It means so much to me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting me. Um, and know that um, in this dark time I am here to support you as well so feel free to check out my website perchingwolfstudios.net to see what um, shamanic services and healings that I offer um, if there's anything there that I can help you with to help empower you to help you um, to get through this time bigger and better than you were before not that probably wasn't the best choice of words but um, greater than you were before use this as the opportunity to grow into our best versions of ourselves and so that is what I am here to do um, so check me out on my website like my Facebook page um, I have a number of different events. I do this once a week on Wednesdays. Mondays, I also do a miniature card reading. So join me in that. Um, and if you're interested, um, if, <laughs> if you're interested in my ramblings and my tangents and everything and would like to take a class with me, I actually have an introduction to shamanic journey class coming up on Tuesday, January 12th, I believe. Um, wow, I'm getting a lot of smudge smoke. Um, so check out my, my, my Facebook page and my website, the information for that. It's three hours. Um, learning how to journey, how, what I was talking about at the beginning of this, if you were here at the beginning, about how to connect with your guides, um, what to do, how to hear them. Um, and then after that, later in January, the third Thursday, um, I'm beginning my first year class, my um, a year-long course in shamanism. I call it deepening the journey because once you learn how to do the journey, then it's like, well, what do I do with it? What, what different dimensions are there? What depth is there that I can do? And so we, I, have a, I offer this year-long course on shamanism. We meet once a month to give you different aspects of shamanism, to explore different questions to ask when you're journeying, different realms to explore, to go where no one has gone before. Um, so check that out if that resonates with you, you know. Um, 
we need more shamans if if our world our civilization not if because i i totally see us making it um this is the great turning the great awakening and we are going to get through this and in order to help us to get through that we need shamans so if you're feeling the call to be shaman or at least um, walk a shamanic path you don't have to be a shaman to live shamanically um, feel free to look at that see if that resonates with you um, this is the fourth year I'm doing it so I, I'm looking forward every class has been like just a little bit better than the one before it and so I'm looking forward to um, whoever shows up for this fourth installment of my one year course and um, it is just it is such a pleasure and an honor to be able to help you grow so that is my deepest joy is to help others to grow and to expand and empower themselves so um, it's a mutual benefit and I learn just as much as my students do it's a learning process for me as well so please that calls you please join me or ask me questions you can email me or message me on Facebook and I'd be happy to answer any questions um, and in time for the holidays I have a number of, of you check my website um, I have some graph like I said I'm a cartoonist I've got some graphic novels available I've got one in particular that I don't have with me right here it's out in the other room of the, the shop but um, the 12, 12 totems of Christmas. I took the totem animals that are in the song of 12, 12 days of Christmas and then like the more human ones. I decided I was, I tried to figure out what totem animals fit that role. And so it's kind of, it could be um, the illustrations. It's, it's basically a coloring book if you want it to be. But it goes 12 days of Christmas with each totem of that day and what that deeper gift, Christmas gift, is of that totem. So check that out on my website. I've also got gift certificates if you wish to give someone else the gift of guidance in the new year. Um, all kinds of things. So um, I am here for you, and I thank you for uh, supporting me being here for me. Um, and I am going to release those directions and spirits that have been holding space for us so lovingly. Spirits of the earth, spirits of the air, spirits of the fire, spirits of the water, Coyote is with me. Coyote is one of the ones that hangs around. I need to fasten that on a little bit better. Thank you, Coyote. Coyote keeps us present. He, like That's the kind of things we talk about coyote medicine and trickster medicine. And it's not mean-spirited. It's not to make you feel less than you are, it's to just kind of get your, when you're going on automatic, it's to bring you more present and aware of where you do, where you are, what you're doing, and 
just goofy stuff like that. So I once was in a drum circle and just just wailing away on my drum and my drumstick broke like here. And so this whole part hit the drum and went flying across the room. Fortunately, it didn't hit anybody, but those are the kind of <laughs> try kind of mishaps that happen. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please come back next week and join me here. Join me on Monday at 7.30 Pacific time. If you want a little miniature reading, um, and feel free to share this video, tell your friends to join us next week to come and join. Um, and I just, I so appreciate your watching. I so appreciate this time with you. This is one of the highlights of my week. And I always look forward to it. It always energizes me as well. And so I thank you for bringing your energy here. Um, so I believe that is it. I can't think of anything else. No more shameless plugs or anything. So thank you again. I really enjoy this time together. Um, and so until next time, know that I love you and that I see you and that I honor you. So have a wonderful week and go shining. Bye.